G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. With War Thunder's recent economy controversy and community backlash, Gaijin have decided to open up their ears to some feedback. Now as a War Thunder community, we are very well known for coming from lots of different places and having lots of different ideas, and now I think it's time to come together, sit down, and figure out a couple of key issues that can make War Thunder's economy better. Of course, if you would like to support the channel, you can buy some merch down in the link in the description. By using the discount code on screen, you can get, I believe it's 25% off. It's good merch. It is a little on the expensive side, but that's on the Teespring side. Uh, it's, uh, it's nothing I can do about it. But with 25% off, that should make it pretty damn reasonable. And of course, that goes to supporting the channel. Now, one of War Thunder's big problems is something that we really can't fix. And that is their attitude towards monetization and their attitude towards the player base. In their rather patronizing how progression and economy is built into free to play games and in War Thunder in particular, their article came off as very patronizing. They were talking about 80% of people have never paid a dime into the game and all of these sort of phrases that are quite sort of in the same vein as well as talking to us about basic things about free-to-play monetization. I really feel like this sort of talking down to the War Thunder player base is detrimental and creates a rift, creates that sort of you and I and lesser versus greater. And this is really, really bad because when you do this, you stifle conversation. And when you do that, the War Thunder player base will revolt. And that's pretty much what the War Thunder player base has done over the last week has essentially revolted. And when you do that, you lose all ability and all respect to make genuine improvements. Despite what the developers say, I, I, I believe this comes from a, a Russian or a Soviet attitude where the leader is someone not to be criticized, otherwise you'll be sort of sent off to the gulag. And when this happens, they surely see this as quite disrespectful. But at the end of the day, when you've got a Western market, you kind of have to cater to the Western culture, which is the customer is always right. Now, of course, if the customer was always right, they would just bend the knee and give everyone a free Abrams. But, you know, that, that's really not how reality works. So we have to find ourselves a little bit of a solution. I don't say that we should just keel over at the first sort of sight of resistance or anything like that, but I certainly think that we should discuss with the War Thunder developers things that will benefit us and will also benefit the developers. Things that will reward a player for playing well or for, you know, playing often or for supporting the game in other means like server population. These things are really valuable to the developers because at the end of the day, it keeps them up on the Steam charts, it keeps them up with their nice healthy player base and it keeps the queue times really short. And if you don't keep your queue time short, people are just going to leave in droves. And you can kind of see what has happened through War Thunder over the years when they've had mass exoduses. The War Thunder player base doesn't recover for a long time. And you see this in, in YouTuber content as well. As a, as a content creator, I think I've gone through three or four slumps at this point, And each of them are really detrimental to their YouTube channels. Sometimes you see YouTube channels just completely fold. Um, and if Gaijin isn't careful, they could also see their game completely fold. And so an attitude change is probably the main thing that needs to happen here. And maybe this is a wake up call for the War Thunder developers. And I sincerely hope it is because at the end of the day, we all really enjoy this game. If we're playing thousands of hours like I have or like many of the other players in the War Thunder community have, there's a clear draw to this game. It's not just a, an addiction as such, but there's genuinely something different about this game. And just throwing it in the bin is not going to benefit anyone. Having this game and having something so unique is really what we come here for. And at the end of the day, preserving that is our, should be our primary goal. Now, let's talk about some actual solutions that we could possibly get to. The first one is lowering silver line costs, mostly for purchases. Uh, repair costs we'll get to in a little bit, but mostly I'm talking about purchases of uh, crew slots, purchases of the vehicle, uh, and crew training. These are, the, these are the three that I really want to cover. This is a fairly common occurrence in a War Thunder player's life. They will get to about tier maybe four, maybe tier five. It's certainly for me back when tier five was the highest, it happened uh, just, just around tier five. 
I would, you would buy a plane, you would unlock it, and then you would basically have not enough silver lions to purchase another plane or to you sort of keep climbing up the ranks. You would have to take a few days to go and buy something that grinds some silver lions and spend the, the week or whatever just getting silver lions. And th this is something that sort of ties back into that attitude issue where Gaijin might just see the War Thunder community as cattle that only need to pay money, despite 80% of the War Thunder community not paying money. These 20% uh, have clearly run into a problem and gone and bought something. And, you know, that's what I did. That's one of the first things that I did. Um, I used some free Golden Eagles app and I got some, uh, silver li some, some Golden Eagles and I bought the Japanese Corsair to grind Silver Lions, solely to grind Silver Lions. And, you know, it was a good investment at the time, but at the end of the day, I paid a little bit of money into the game to get those um, the, those Silver Lions. I actually, you know, put 500 or 700 Golden Eagles in as a contribution. But a lot of the War Thunder player base shouldn't really have to do that. I feel like time is a, is a way better way to do that. And of course, we'll get to that in a moment. But this sort of Silver Lion bottleneck is a bit of a problem because at the end of the day it just makes people sort of go back and sort of sit there at this one tier and just do the same thing over and over and over again until they can finally afford something. Now of course this does populate the lower tiers but I have an idea for that and we'll come back to that in a bit. I do think the silver line costs in, and crew training costs should be decreased. It's a bit of a relic from the, uh, from the old times of the game. And it's really, really bad for things like Tanks RB, where you've got lots of tanks that you can potentially pull a lineup from. And if you want to run two at the same time, but they occupy the same crew slot, you might have to pay upwards of a million silver lines just to enjoy those two, two tanks, or that tank and plane, or whatever, in the same lineup. And this is a real drag on the game, because it just adds another bit of that slog to the War Thunder experience, whereas it should really be about the gameplay, it should be about the strategy, your positioning, your ability to execute a boom and zoom manoeuvre, or things like that. But instead it just becomes a game that sort of sucks and is stressful, and this only adds to it. I feel like reducing this is going to make it much better for the average War Thunder player. I also think that crew training is just sort of dumb. It's just, it's just another level of monetization. They've got the purchase, purchase of the aircraft or the, or, or the vehicle. They've got the crew training, crew experting, crew acing, and then crew levels. Crew levels, I feel like, are a little bit toxic. Uh, level 150 on a tank is practically impossible. And all of those little things, everything from you know your turret turning smoothness to your commander to artillery to repair time, really important. In planes, it's sort of just G-tolerance, stamina, and uh, there's another one that basically means that the pilot, when fully trained, can pretty much take a 50 cal to the chest and still live. Uh, but that that is stuff that really affects gameplay, particularly G-tolerance. Uh, and particularly in the early jets, it really makes a difference. And this is where people are learning a lot. They're really starting to struggle with a, br a brand new style of gameplay, and it is qu quite difficult to sort of learn that and then deal with some grinding as well. They've already got the, the next plane to grind to and they've already got overpowered premiums to worry about as well, like the SQ-11. But this just sort of adds to the pressure and adds to the level of resistance. And I reckon that if Gaijin lowered that level of resistance by sort of not quite abandoning crew training, but certainly making it much easier to access, perhaps making it easier to access on premium time. We'll, we'll, we'll get onto that in a bit. This would really make it much easier. And of course, if you were to do it on just premium time, say you were to double the what premium gets currently, um, then players might actually be more inclined to go and buy some premium time. Uh, but also we could implement something to allow players to get more access to premium by supporting the game through server population. And this is another thing that I, I sort of want to segue into. We're looking at a player base that is growing and growing and growing. And of course, whilst we're expanding in terms of tech trees, expanding in terms of vehicle types, like the French Navy is coming, I'm sure we're going to get a Chinese Navy. We're, we're definitely going to get like more tech trees in the future of one type or another. 
But at the end of the day, if there's no one to play them, then development time goes to waste. And of course, the servers don't get as populated as they should be. And I feel like server population is undervalued by the War Thunder developers. I feel like being able to put some time into grinding and having that access to more premiums and more premium time is something that is extremely valuable to the War Thunder developers and they don't realize it. When your servers are empty, you are basically like not having servers that are populated that you pay for and you probably maintain and that's really bad but you've also got like players that are waiting three four minutes for matches that shouldn't really have a three or four minute queue and that's because there's just no one to play because no one cares and no one enjoys the 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 planes or the matchmaker and that can often be due to the grind if i were to give every op player an opportunity to earn a premium through say the warbond shop this is a, a fantastic thing that we already have in game and there are plenty of tier 3 and i believe even tier 4 premiums that you can grind in the warbond shop but also like what about the opportunity for a week of premium time what about the opportunity for 21 days of premium time what about higher tier premiums i feel like something can be done in that respect by going through the warbond shop by completing your dailies by dedicating your time and effort to the game through these tiers two three and four you can very easily populate parts of the game that might otherwise not have as much population and at the same time you can always increase the player base lower the queue times and sort of encourage more people to gravitate to the game and if 20% of the players increases by so much more, say another 10,000 more, then you've got, uh, you've got another 10,000 people essentially to pay into the game. So uh, you would have an extra 50,000 people. And of course, those, uh, that 20%, 10,000 people would put at least some money into the game. And you all of a sudden have another 10,000 paying customers because the game is a lot more enticing because you can get that that new shiny F14B a little bit quicker. And I feel like that is so much more important, having those customers that, that sort of come in because the game is actually doable for once, than sort of trying to milk your remaining 20% more and more and more. And whether, whether or not that's profitable, I, I can't say, but it's certainly not going to be sustainable in the long run. And you're gonna have players that just get fed up and leave the game. So having players that stick around, play more, fill out those matchmakers and grind a little bit more for an easier time in War Thunder is a lot more realistic. And it's certainly a lot better for the game overall because you're going to have the extra population and you're gonna have the extra revenue stream. And at the same time, you're gonna have a happier player base that is less likely to pull off revolts like this. One of the other things that I would really like to see is an access to those higher tier premiums. At the moment, we have a fair selection from pretty much every single nation, but I feel like it could be done really cheaply and without much effort. You could very easily have a plane of some sort with a pilot attached to it that comes in the premium tree that is based off one in the regular tree. You could have a World War II ME262 Ace, for example, or you could have a Korean War Sabre Ace as a premium plane that is only attainable in the Warbond shop. Of course, the collectors would be interested in that, and I'm sure they could probably pay to it, but there are plenty of different ways that this could be done, and I feel like a little bit of creativity from the developers could go quite a long way. In fact, it doesn't even have to be the developers. It could be through revenue share, it could be through some other strategy, but just having these sort of, maybe a rank five premium that is loosely based off an ace, or loosely based off a current tech tree plane is perfectly fine. I really don't see an issue and it doesn't take a lot of development effort. It's it's essentially not really free. It might take maybe an afternoon of work, um, but at the end of the day, you've got yourself a very marketable and a very easy fix to a problem that you might not even think existed. In fact, it'll improve the quality of life of the average player 
and it will potentially bring in more people. It'll flesh out matchmakers that might not previously have been fleshed out before, and it will encourage players to play pretty much every day. And whilst the Warbond shop kind of does that, a higher tier premium is a lot more shiny and a lot more interesting, particularly if it's an interesting plane, or if it's a storied plane with a lot of history behind it. You could make money very, very easily, or alternatively, you could very easily increase the server population. And I think in the long run, the server population is ultimately the more important thing. The final thing that I really want to talk about here is the repair cost and the uh, RPs. RPs? RP. Uh, of course, and Silver Lion Reward. Personally, I think that excellence in the War Thunder community is a little bit low. Whilst I am a little bit of an experienced player and I have a tendency to get up on my high horse, uh, do bring me down if you think I, I'm getting a little bit too arrogant or whatever. Um, I, I do think that the War Thunder player base should be encouraged to play their planes correctly, or at least not to take excessive risks. One of the things I notice that comes around pretty much every time there are deals and discounts and, and things like that is that a lot of people with their brand new premiums will buy up a couple of tiers and whatever, that's, that, that, that is what it is and I don't really have much to say about that. But what I do have to say is that they tend to be inexperienced and they tend to do a lot more things that are way too risky. Last minute head-ons, full commit head-ons, stalling for enemy planes. I think these things should not be rewarded. Desp even if you get a kill, I think that if you win a match, you should get a lot of Silver Lions and a lot of RP. And I think that if you play your plane correctly to the point where you don't die, there is merit to giving these players more rewards. And the only way to really do that is to punish players that don't. I Maybe giving them a survivor's bonus could also work. Uh, but alternatively, or one of the things that I've, I've sort of brainstormed here is having a high repair cost for generally across the board. So if you purposely, or if you play poorly, and if you play poorly often, it will reflect badly in your Silver Lion count. But if you win matches, if you play well in matches, if you're say in the top 30% of the team, I feel like you should get quite a bonus. I feel like there should be a real incentive to play really well. I think assists should count for a lot more than they do. I think that there should be some emphasis put on playing as a team so things like the teamwork award and the supporting fire award should be greatly encouraged and that means that players that might not otherwise be earning good silver lions and good rp will be rewarded accordingly you don't get much for a nuke i really think you should get way more for a nuke uh, these are sort of things that are really really important because at the end of the day the matches themselves are the main draw for War Thunder, at least, at least for me as a content creator or, or a veteran player. Each individual match, the ability to work with your teammates or the ability to do a 2v5 carry, these things are what I live for in the game and these are the things that other veteran players will also live for. And when you in turn become a veteran player, these are the things that you will live for. And so I think that safeguarding these by encouraging the average War Thunder community, uh, the average War Thunder player, to improve their gameplay, to maybe not die as much, uh, I don't really see a better way. I let me know in the comments below, of course, but I think that the best way is to reward good play and to disincentivize bad play. And I think that this is probably the best way to do it. If, like I said, if there is any other better way that you can think of, let me know in the comments section below. I'm not here to pontificate, I'm really just all ears and sort of putting things out there that I think might be a good idea. At the end of the day, I'm one voice. You guys, you in the War Thunder community, are the overwhelming majority, and I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to see what your thoughts are. I would like to see one of the things that maybe pisses you off in the War Thunder environment. I think that the attitude problem is probably the biggest here. And whilst that is out of our hands, that's sort of something that we could bring up. That's something that we could sort of voice our opinions on. And of course, we should do that. If you guys have opinions, put them in the forums. Discuss these things and discuss them civilly. Provide reasoning, provide solutions, and avoid attacking or sort of discussing things in a way that might reflect poorly on your argument. If you are someone that sort of comes at things aggressively, take a step back. Think about these things, if someone were to say them to you, and think about how you would feel 
if they said them in that tone or in that manner. If uh, Gaijin's tone deafness is anything to go by, you don't really want to be the same. You want to take the higher path and just sort of explain things calmly, collectedly, and just sort of bring the community together. Because at the end of the day, this is the only way you're going to do it. You're the only way you're going to make some actual changes. Uh, being angry, calling people names, um, doing anything sort of stupid, um, any sort of toxic behavior is not going to make any friends. And they're just going to write you off. And they have, and they will. So just be civil. That's all I ask. And of course, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. But ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for watching because these are the only ways that we could really sort of forward the, the beauty of the War Thunder game. It's a good game. At heart, I feel like there is great potential. The developers, as frustrating as they can be, uh, have opened up a window for communication. And this is something that we have to jump on. So ladies and gents, I implore you, be civil, get your point across, and let's make this game a better place. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.